Google has announced its latest AI video model. Just take a look at these examples coming out of Vio. Vio can generate videos more than a minute long, which is even longer than Sora. And it can do that in 1080p. The videos coming out of Vio like these are highly consistent, aesthetic, and beautiful. And not only that, but Vio is demonstrating some remarkable editing features, being able to take a video clip and update it using a text prompt, as well as leveraging masks to edit just small parts of a video. Now, what I'm particularly excited about with Vio is its ability to take multiple prompts and transition between those in a natural way. In this video, we're going to break down this brand new tool, look at its capabilities, how it performs against Sora, and much, much more. So let's dive in to the latest frontier in AI video together. Let's take a look at the announcement video for Vio. Today, I'm excited to announce our newest, most capable generative video model called Vio. <laughs> Vio creates high quality 1080p videos from text, image, and video prompts. So the key facts about Vio are that it can create videos up to and over 60 seconds long, and it's generating these in 1080p. It can capture the details of your instructions in different visual and cinematic styles. You can prompt for things like aerial shots of a landscape or a time lapse, and further edit your videos using additional prompts. So that's a key factor that seems particularly interesting about Vio is that you'll be able to generate videos. And then after you've generated them, you'll be able to re-edit the videos that you've generated using text prompts. Now, this will give us a versatile chat interface to edit and update our shots with. You can use Vio in our new experimental tool called Video FX. We're exploring features like storyboarding and generating longer scenes. Vio gives you unprecedented creative control. Now, Video FX is another tool that they have announced related to AI video that is more of a fully fledged editing suite for being able to combine different clips together in a way that's going to allow us to create longer, more comprehensive narratives. Now, they've mentioned a couple of features. One is being able to extend clips and also being able to edit multiple clips at a time. Now, this is quite reminiscent of a couple of other tools that are taking a shot at this space as well, such as LTX Studio or Morph Studio. And even what Premiere are looking to do themselves over at Adobe. Techniques for generating static images have come a long way, but generating video is a different challenge altogether. Not only is it important to understand where an object or subject should be in space, it needs to maintain this consistency over time, just like the car in this video. So here he is talking about the importance for temporal consistency, which is the challenge of making sure that reality is accurately reflected in the videos that are generated in an AI video tool. And this is something that AI video has had some challenges with before. This is because the AI video essentially has to map out an entire universe, a reality, to be able to track the realistic interpretations and integrations of different objects with a space. So it needs to understand exactly uh, what an object is and what is the potential movement capabilities of this object in a universe that has a defined set of physics. Vio builds upon years of our pioneering generative video model work, including GQN, Fanaki, Walt, VideoPoet, Lumiere, and much more. We combine the best of these architectures and techniques to improve consistency, quality, and output resolution. So they are claiming that this is their best model for consistency, quality, and output resolution, and it certainly is. But exactly how well does it match up, firstly, to the available AI video generators on the market, and secondly, to Sora, which obviously is not available to the general public, but has demonstrated some of the most stunning AI videos that we have seen. Now, the prompt for the first example here is a fast tracking shot through a bustling dystopian sprawl with bright neon signs, flying cars, and mist. Night lens flare volumetric lighting. You would have to say that it has done a fairly decent job, though I do find some of the neon lighting to be a little bit haphazard and unintentional here. Perhaps this would not be if I were actually to design a building with neon lighting. 
I would doubt I would have it in such an unorganized way. I would likely take a more geometric approach, whereas these simply look like somebody has painted them on in Procreate. But it's handled the prompt effectively. The the spaceships don't look particularly well rendered. It's hard to make out exact forms on that. But I do appreciate the mixture of speeds that it applies with the drone shot. Now, what's interesting about this example is there is a second prompt, which is how the scene develops. So it starts off with this first prompt and then it moves into a fast tracking shot through a futuristic dystopian sprawl with bright neon signs, starships in the sky night, volumetric lighting. And we can see that there is a sudden shift in the example as this second prompt kicks in and the camera accelerates and there is a change in the atmosphere and tone of the scene. Now, the third prompt is a neon hologram of a car driving at top speed. Speed of light, cinematic, incredible details, volumetric lighting. And in this part of the film, we see that it transfers to this shot. It does not do it seamlessly. It does not enter a shot of the car into the scene, but instead it applies a transition and then shows us a new scene, albeit with very similar stylistic choices. First, we have this hint of something happening with a wisp of smoke appearing from the bottom right corner. And then the whole scene transitions from this wisp of smoke to the neon car. The adherence to the prompt is well executed, but the general feel of the video is that it's slightly blurry. Now, we are going to compare this shot to a similar shot from Sora, where we also have a car driving through a urban night scene. And as we can see that Sora certainly has more details and the reflections of the car are much more beautiful and realistic. Now, the final prompt for this video sequence is the car leaves the tunnel back into the real world city, Hong Kong. I suppose it's interesting to see that it has understood perhaps not the most clear or grammatically correct instruction here, back into the real world city, Hong Kong. Now, if you want to check out any of these examples, I'll leave all the links in the description below. If you're new here, I'm AI Samson, and on this channel, we discuss the latest developments in AI. So let's take a look at this transition from the third prompt to the fourth, exiting the neon world and entering back into the real Hong Kong. And what I particularly like about this is that there is a clear notion that something is about to happen. We suddenly have this white end of the tunnel appearing. And I love that as the white tunnel, as the end of the tunnel approaches, we start to see a glimpse of the second reality. We can see some cars here. And it does a wonderful job of transitioning between these two prompts. It's extremely impressive how it's able to take two different ideas and create a consistent, coherent, and logical interpretation of how to go from one prompt to another. And it does that maintaining consistency with the elements that remain in the next prompt. The car does not change. And this scene is particularly impressive. One of the most realistic that I've seen coming out of there is a nice variety in the buildings, that they are different heights, they're different points. One of the criticisms I have of many AI art generators and AI video generators is that they often create very symmetrical compositions because this is lighter on the computive load for them. So if you notice, there will be a lot of symmetry that does not seem particularly realistic. Now, we've also got a nice variety of different cars. I would say that the road markings do not look in entirely correct. There are just random dashes around the screen everywhere. And it doesn't really look like everyone is driving in their own lanes. It's more like a free-for-all. But I do appreciate the, the shadows here, the variety of the different cars, and the consistency of the objects in the scene. Now, one of the things that is most difficult for an AI video generator is visual occlusions. And that's what happens when one object passes behind another. And we can see in the Sora example of the car driving that these cars on the left-hand side certainly do not react in a way that we would expect. That as this car passes in front of the other, it seems to morph and change and almost crash into each other. So let's just take a look at that closer comparison with a couple of cars passing in front of each other in VO. So if we're, we're going to focus on this area here, first of all, it doesn't necessarily look like there is a car behind this blue car, but it may well be obscured by the car. It is possible. And then we see a car appear in between these two cars. Yes, and here is an extra silver car that certainly was not present, unless he was accelerating at a huge speed from now to now. It's unusual that he would appear in this space. But you can see that there is 
I would say actually a better treatment of visual occlusions than in Sora. So the interesting thing here is they are claiming that the video has not been modified. And what's particularly interesting about that is that it means that all of the transitions between the prompts were created inside of a single video generated by VO, which means we can input various prompts and get out videos more than a minute long that take us from one shot to another in a consistent way that maintains coherence and truth to our contents, to our characters, to our objects. And this is very exciting. And I particularly admire the ability for it to go from different scenes in a logical way, the way it exited the tunnel and the way that it went from the first to second prompt seamlessly. Obviously, it's important to note that this is likely a very cherry picked example from Google. I would imagine that they picked the very best example to showcase to us after trying out thousands of different variations. So. Until we get our hands on it, it'll be difficult to say exactly how well it performs. Now, I, we can take a look at a few other examples. I particularly enjoy this silhouette of a horse and a cowboy. I love these solar flares that appear from behind this horse's buttocks. And the sway of the horse's tail is very natural. Just here, it really has a sense of of lifelike detail. And the horse is moving in a very realistic way. It's amazing how the AI can understand the anatomy of the horse. And it's also very interesting that this came from a very simple humanistic prompt without a huge amount of detail. Now, some of the other realistic shots coming out of VO display its strength at visualizing landscapes and drone shots and moving visual environments. It does look to excel specifically with landscapes. Now, the reason for this is I believe that Google trained VO not only on Google Earth, but also on Google Maps. And this means it's performing particularly well with landscapes and drone shots, as well as driving in a street view. As you can see from this example here, this certainly showcases VO to, its, to the height of its abilities. This northern light scene is also rendered extremely beautifully. And there are some shot types that I think excel inside of VO, particularly this time lapse. It has rendered out everything very creatively, though it's only a three second clip. Here we have another video that has certainly taken aim at Sora because it's an extremely similar example to one we've seen coming out of Sora. Now take a look at these jellyfish and look at the beautiful way they move. It's almost like an abstract art painting and it's incredibly visually engaging and we're getting a nice sense of both camera movement of the diver, the cameraman moving through the water as well as the objects in the scene moving naturally that they are swimming floating along and some beautiful ripples on the surface of the water. Here are another two examples. This uh, sunflower opening up on a dark background is absolutely sensational, highly detailed, highly accurate, coherent and stunning. Likewise, this extreme close up with a shallow depth of field of a puddle in the street reflecting a busy futuristic Tokyo scene with bright neon signs, night lens flare, has absolutely stunning reflections of these neon lights on the puddle. It's an incredibly atmospheric shot that gives a real sense of atmosphere and environment. And this would not look out of place in any film. Now, what's really exciting about VO is its ability to take existing videos and make edits to it with text prompts. And this is one of the examples I would love to demonstrate to you here. They have said, when given both an input video and editing command, like adding kayaks to an aerial shot of a coastline, VO can apply this command to the initial video and create a new edited video. And we can see that here, that on the left, there is a video that was created by VO, drone shot along the Hawaii jungle coastline, sunny day. Now, they've been able to edit and update this shot and add in kayaks in the water. So if we look very closely at this, we can see that it is an excellent re-rendering of the shot, but some subtle changes have been made. For example, these rocks jutting out into the water have been replaced with kayaks. So the composition is extremely close, but some of the finer details have been updated. But to be able to edit a shot with just a simple text prompt is a very exciting development. Now, another feature that VO is demonstrating is the ability to work with masked editing. So they have said it supports masked editing, enabling changes to specific areas of the video when you add a mask area to your video and text prompt. 
VO can also generate a video with an image as input along with the text prompt. By providing a reference image in combination with a text prompt, it conditions VO to generate a video that follows the image's style and user prompt instructions. So this is displaying the ability to work with masks inside of VO that will be able to essentially in-paint videos and really keep the composition the same or elements of a video the same and simply change small parts that we define with masks, which are essentially selecting an area of the image. So an area in which VO appears to be leading is that it can generate videos in excess of 60 seconds. At the moment, the longest we have seen so far are 60 seconds coming out of Sora, but VO purports that it can create them much longer than that. And one of the examples that they claim came from a single prompt is one minute and 23 seconds long, which was the one that we watched. Now, VO is claiming to have taken a large leap forward in its ability to deal with the consistency of characters, objects, and styles. And it claims to have done this with their cutting edge latent diffusion transformers. Now, VO has attained these remarkable improvements in two main ways. The first is that they added more details to the captions of each video in its training data. So they went through all of the videos that the model is trained on and gave them more accurate, more complete, and more specific labels so that the AI can understand in more detail what is inside each video. And this has led to a better relationship between the input of a prompt and the output of the video. Now, the second technique that led to these improvements are the that the model uses high quality compressed representations of video also known as latents, so it's more efficient too. These steps improve overall quality and reduce the time it takes to generate videos. So here we have a clear preview of one of the videos generated by VO. And this is of a tracking shot of a 1960s convertible driving up to a Spanish Mediterranean palace. Now, what we can identify in this shot is that it looks coherent, that the composition is attractive, the details are well rendered. I would say that perhaps uh, some of the tiling looks a, a little bit like it has been splodged together. But apart from that, it is a beautiful rendering. Uh, it is an effective example, but we can identify the text on the back of the car here is not rendered with a readable font. It's just a mess of pixels. Now, in this example, you would say that this sailboat lacks a, a lot of detail, shadow, shading, and lighting, that the tones coming across this front sail are incredibly flat, and it looks more like a uh, fairly average computer graphic rather than a realistic piece of video. And the prompts for this one was a cinematic still of a lone sailboat with billowing white sails glides gracefully across a tranquil... This example shows a detailed jungle trail, Hawaii dense foliage cinematic lighting. And the first thing I immediately recognize here is that the outlines of individual elements look slightly fuzzy and undefined. Just look how uh, blended and morphed the edges of the leaves are. I would also say the perspective looks slightly skew with that the background is elevated in an unnatural way. It looks uh, foreshortened. Also, I would like to see perhaps a, a slight degradation of quality going from the foreground to the background, but there is an incredible flatness to this path. Now, here we have a realistic rendering, and what I particularly like about this example is it goes from out of focus to into focus, which gives it a, a real sense of aesthetics, of a taste, of intentionality in the techniques of cinematography. So that is something that I have not seen developed or executed quite as effectively. Now, video FX is not available to the public yet, but you can join the waitlist. All you have to do is come to this site, which I'll leave a link to in the description below, and fill out a Google Forms where you'll add your basic information. So VO is Google's response to Sora, and it's demonstrating some quite remarkable features. I am particularly impressed by its ability to create videos longer than one minute, and its ability to work with multiple prompts in generating videos in the same sequence. So being able to enter, say, four prompts that take you from one shot to another to another.
and then Vio is able to generate these, but also transition between them. Vio is demonstrating some exciting features like re-editing clips with text prompts and also using masks to edit clips as well. But what is most exciting about this is Google putting more pressure on OpenAI to release Sora to the public. And I'm sure that Google would love to do one over OpenAI and release this VO model first because they are undoubtedly, VO and Sora are the best AI video models that we have seen across a number of different metrics. I would say that comparing the quality between VO and Sora, that Sora excels in rendering out lifelike humans, whereas VO seems to excel particularly well at rendering out realistic landscapes and environments, likely because it was trained on Google Earth and Google Maps. But let me know what you think about VO. How does it match up to Sora and the other AI video generators? We're living in exciting times, and I thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure to have you here. And most of all, I wish you a delightful day.